Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next Hewlett Packard's Lab podcast from Research to Reality. Today, we have a great honor and pleasure to host Marco Fiorentino. Hi, Marco. Hi, Dehan. How are you? I'm excellent. How about you? Good, good. Thank you. So I hear you're going to talk today about photonics. That's, that's what I do here, and that's uh, kind of my passion. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit more. Introduce yourself, please, first. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Marco Fiorentino. Uh, I have been here at Eli Packard Labs for almost 20 years. And for most of that time, I have been working on photonics in various different flavors and incarnations. And, uh, you know, before that, I, I, was, uh, I spent some time in universities in the U.S. at MIT and Northwestern University and also at the University of Rome in Italy. And originally, I'm from Italy, and I got my PhD from the University of Naples in physics. So photonics is broad area. What are your roles and responsibilities in, you, you are part of large scale integrated photonics lab, is that right? Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, as, as the name says, we work mostly on integrated photonics, which is the art of, you know, putting multiple photonic components on a chip, much like you will do with an electronic chip. And in, inside, inside the group, uh, you know, my role is, is mostly kind of management. So I both manage people and do project management. And, you know, when I get a chance, I still like to kind of get my hands dirty and do some, some actual research work. So that's kind of what I do day by day. I'm just curious, what does it mean to make hands dirty with photons? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> well, you know, to, you know, f photons are, are pretty clean, but, you know, you still need a lot of like dirty, you know, clean rooms and, you know, uh, chemicals and all sorts of things to actually be able to build the things that we, we, we use day by day. And, you know, so, yeah, there's still a, a lot of like real world uh, physical matter uh, work that goes on. Nice. <laughs> and when I started, photonics was primarily used for communication, but nowadays, you know, you use it for other things. Can you tell us a little bit about our history, especially for those of us who are not photonics experts? Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, you know, photonics, uh, because photons are what, what, in physics, we call bosons, and they do not interact very well with other things. And so uh, they're very good at, you know, going long distance with very little interference. Um, and so they're very good for communications. And so that's, that's where, you know, most of our work is, is uh, concentrated. But, you know, because of the ability of building like very small um, circuits and, and sort of confine the light in very small spaces, uh, we also have the ability to increase the, uh, to have very efficient interactions. And so you can do, you can start thinking, and we have started thinking about doing things that are not strictly um, communication, but also um, computing using photonics. And so that, that's one of the, the topics that we are, we are like mostly working these days. And that's where you're doing all these testings in the clean room. Yes, yes. And... So that's at the bottom. So what kind of applications at the top are using photonics? Well, so the, you know, the, the applications that are like more close to, to products are really the applications that are around communications. And so, for example, next generation uh, products like next generation slingshot is planned to have like Photonics interconnect, photonic interconnect to carry the data. So, so that's that's the the applications that are more you know closer to products. Obviously, for for the computation, we are very interested in um, using photonics to build um, AI and machine learning accelerators. So that that's where a lot of the work. So the applications are you know as as you can imagine, kind of making. Um, uh, machine learning protocols more efficient, faster, and, and so on and so forth. And what is the overall process? How do you take this research 
which is really mind-boggling, thinking about how you do computation with photons. I can't even imagine in my head. But what is the process? You come up with a great idea, then you prototype in this clean room with experiment, and then you work with our business units people, with product managers. How, how, does, how do you take it from idea, crazy idea, towards real product? Yeah, that, that's that's been a lot of, of the work that we've been doing. And, you know, it's it's like one of the big questions of develop, of research in general. How do you take the research and sort of move it to development? And, you know, for photonics specifically or for integrated photonics, um, a lot of the time we have seen that sort of the best way to take our ideas and sort of bring them into our own products kind of we have to do like go outside the company and then come back. And so that means uh, that in, you know, all the way through uh, uh, with the, you know, the formulation of the idea, but also the various different, you know, implementations, we work with a lot of external partners that we know, you know, we're a lab, so we cannot scale, but we work with partners that can scale up so that, you know, once the idea is proven and it's working, our business unit can go out to the partner and sort of buy it from them as opposed to trying to build everything in-house. You know, there was a period where HP w did a lot of that, but that, you know, the world has changed and things have gotten more, much more complicated. So building that network of partners and uh, it's, it's become, you know, very, very important. So a lot of our time is spent and of cultivating that network. And what are these horizons that you are talking about? Are you talking about a year, five years, 50 years? Yeah, I mean, we've been at this for, you know, for quite some time, more than, than 10 years, almost 15. So obviously the horizon can be quite long. And again, as I was always saying, we're really seeing an uptake in the interest of the business unit in the... Um, in the you know communication side of things, they, it's it's gotten to the point where they they need it and they want it today. Uh, for some of the new things, obviously, like the 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 computation of uh, the optic computation or photonic computation, the time horizon might be much longer, maybe five or ten years in the future. And again, we you know we we try to keep that pipeline of all these various different timelines active at the same time. And how do you measure success of your work, especially across all these phases, 10 years, 15 years? You know, you got to motivate yourself throughout these times. Yeah. I mean, to me, it, one of the things that's always good is that we are, we do work as a research laboratory. And so we have the freedom to uh, write papers uh, you know, scientific papers that allows us to sort of brag a little bit, but also get feedback from the community. So that that's, a, a, you know, a, a, a measure of success that you can publish in good, good journals and good conferences. Um, obviously, there's also like the intellectual property side of things and eventually, you know, the product side of, you know, having an impact on, on, the, on, the, on the company itself. So in your career so far, these 20 years, what are you most proud of? Yeah, I, I, I have to say the thing that I'm most proud of is, is really uh, the group that, you know, I helped build inside HP. I think, I think there's, it's, a, it's a, a group of people that is extremely talented, very motivated, and, you know, there's really a, a very very nice culture of collaborations, helping each other, you know, striving for, for excellence. So, so that, that will be really <laughs> the, the, the thing that, that makes me most proud of, you know, of the things I've done at HP. And keeps you here for these yep. 20 years. Yeah, it <laughs> always comes down to people. Yeah. Yep. Um, when I think about communication, Tonics and all these, I always think of standards first, like 802.11 and others. We all think about those. So how are standards important in photonics specifically? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have to say, um, you know, there's kind of two, two uh, types of photonics. There's the telecom side, which is highly standardized, has been standardized for, for a long, long time. And then there is the, the type of photonics that we do for 
sort of photonic interconnects, let's say, for high performance computing. And those are kind of getting more and more standardized. Some um, sometimes, you know, the standard process is kind of a little bit like clumsy and, and long. So people also do a lot of um, uh, like manufacturing types of agreement. So, for example, I was the representative for um, HPE on an organization that's called OIF, the Optical Interconnects uh, Forum, which is not quite a standard um, uh, organization. They sort of write position papers, but they are connected with, you know, the IEEE. So there is sort of the, the companies come together, they, they build a consensus, and then that kind of gets moved up to to the IEEE um, standard but but that's that's very important because you know um, the it's very very expensive and not not very efficient to build everybody builds their own solution and they're all incompatible and you know as a system integrator HP is kind of doesn't like that at all because we want to be able to swap things around so uh, definitely it's part of our job to encourage and participate Freedom to swap. Yep. <laughs> um, you mentioned IEEE earlier. You mentioned publishing paper. You have other association that you are probably part of, um, such as um, Optica, APS, etc. How are these organizations, professional organizations, important to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm specifically uh, sort of being a member of Optical used to be the Optical Society of America. And that's sort of my scientific home, I, I feel. So it's it's very important because, you know, again, it provides a forum for, for me to meet people, kind of grow professionally. Um, and so, you know, publish and go to conferences. So so that that's that's, you know, very, very important to have that external feedback. And, you know, whenever I can, I, I try to sort of give back to the community through, you know, organizing conferences, uh, reviewing papers and, you know, participating to forums and things like that. So. so your career is really rich. What did you find most gratifying throughout your career? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do enjoy the sort of the, the, the kind of the thrill of the discovery, if you will. So that that's something that that's always fun, you know, having a new problem and, you know, breaking it to in, in parts and solving it. Um, but also, again, it, it also goes, that there's also the, the people component, the fact that you have the ability to, you know, work with smart people that, that you know, can help you solve the problem. Or in some cases, you know, they have, like they lead, then you can just give them a, a little bit push or help around the edges to, you know, Kind of make sure that their uh, their vision comes to fruition. So th those are you know the things that you know makes me get up in the morning. Um, during your get ups in the morning, you had many forks potential in the road. Um, you came to U.S. You could have stayed in Italy. You moved to industry. You could have stayed academia. If you would be building your career again all over. Would you do it the same way or what would you do differently? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I also kind of feel like it was a lot less um, sort of intentional <laughs> that, that you make it sound, you know, some, sometime, you know, it, it's a matter of like, you know, 10 days difference and, you know, maybe there would have been a different offer and I would be in a completely different and, you know, it's, it's really like, uh, not in, intentional. So I don't know that I will change anything, to be honest. Um, it, it's, it's been a, a really fun ride uh, with very, very interesting people. So <laughs> I, you know. And beyond this group of people that you're mm -hmm. very happy with and we're very happy with you, how do you see the impact on broader scale of people, mm -hmm. the world, the broader good? We in this company and in other companies take pride of not just working for profit, but also working for broader good. How do you see your work on photonics contribute to that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, to me, the, there's, you know, as a company, we like build machines that 
can solve very important and fundamental so, you know society scientific problems and so you know whatever you can do you know obviously it's you know small like bricks in the wall everybody has a little contribution i think photonics will be one contribution to build you know these machines that will help define the future of humanity um so so that's that's definitely you know from a technical point of view that's that's an important thing i also I feel that, um, you know, as, as scientists or technologists, you know, technology is so important and so central to like society this way, but we have to make sure that it's used well. And so I think that we have a responsibility as scientists to participate and, you know, be part of the conversation and, you know, influence decisions so that the technologies are used for for good and not for, you know, bad uh, goals. Great answer, Marco. We usually end these um, podcasts on personal notes. Mm -hmm. um, our audience emphasized that they like to hear who the interviewee is, his background. So some of the questions we usually ask is, what kind of books could you recommend? Is there anything that you've read nice lately? So, yeah, so I, I, I've actually um, been uh, on sort of an, a reading project for a few, uh, now a few years. I'm reading this this kind of collection of books called the Harvard Classics, which is kind of like the books that you have to read before you die. So mm -hmm. I'm not planning to die yet, but... And so, and so this, this is like 72 volumes, so it, it takes some time, but, and, and it's, be, it's, it's actually a quite interesting because there, are, I mean, some things that you expect, like, you know, Shakespeare and Milton and things like that from sort of the American perspective, uh, but also some, some things that are <clears throat> maybe less expected and, and very interesting, that I found very interesting, like the autobiography of uh, Benjamin Franklin, which is very entertaining. And, you know, he was a politician, he was a scientist. Yep. So he is a, is a really interesting personality and, and definitely kind of a lively character. So <laughs> When you don't read 72 volumes <laughs> of the books, what do you do in your spare time? Well, you know, we're we're really lucky here in the in the Bay Area that the environment is so nice. So hiking, being outside is something that I really enjoy. And um, you know, I also enjoy cooking. So that that's kind of a, a little bit of a hobby for me. Italian or Chinese or Japanese? I Mexican. <laughs> I, I I mean I obviously my my background is Italian, so I, I do cook Italian, but my wife is Chinese, so I, I try my hand at that. Um, and also kind of local, like the California, Mexican sort of a heritage is something that I'm also interested. So I try to do a little bit of everything, not Japanese for some reason. <laughs> and when you compare <laughs> to the times when you grew up in Italy and today, what kind of differences do you see? What strikes you as most different? Yeah, I mean, obviously there are like time differences, um, you know, Things were a little bit slower and like maybe not as technology, you know, the technology was not so pervasive. So that, that's a big difference. But I think, you know, and, and also, you know, Italy is a very different society and the way that people kind of relate to each other and talk to each other is much different from, you know, what you have here. And of course, you know, like when I was growing up, um, I was in school, so so. I, you know, my life was very different than now with, you know, different responsibilities, different things. So, yeah, it's been it's been quite a journey, I would say. <laughs> Even soccer or football, as we called it, uh, evolved over the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Marco. I really enjoyed. Uh, I was hoping we'll do this long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But better late than ever. <laughs> thank you very much.